Hey everyone, our Sean McBride. Welcome to another edition of Journey to CEO, where my co-host and I, my co-host Ann Gaddy and I talk with guests about growing their business, what they're doing on the journey from entrepreneur to CEO, and what they're doing with their business. We're kind of doing a special series here on change and disruption in light of what's happening in the world around us. We have Tanya Edinger joining us. Uh, she does a lot of luxury events. She helps people uh, put together their plans, make their events special. She's even doing some stuff in the virtual world. So we're excited to have her join us today. I'm going to toss it over to her, let her introduce herself. And then we're going to talk some about this journey to entrepreneur to CEO and how to help some tips to help build your business. Hey, Tanya. Hi, I'm Tanya Edinger with uh, Weddings of Pittsburgh and Events of Pittsburgh and Travel Design by Tanya. And I believe that luxury is an experience and what better experience than to be a guest at your own event. Wonderful. Wonderful. And so, you know, we, we you're well positioned in light of the long-term macro trends in the economy, right? People are moving more to experiences, um, you know, questioning all the material possessions, all the upkeep and all the things and, you know, moving to more of an event world. But of course we've had a recent disruption with that and, uh, people changing their habits a little bit. So why don't we just start by tell us what you've seen. I mean, what's going on in the world in your environment? Well, unfortunately, we're not allowed to leave our house or be with people. So that's uh, creating a yearning and a longing for the, the events industry. And I look for that to bounce back tremendously. It's just going to uh, really come together the second we're allowed out. I see people getting back together. I, I feel like it's absolutely going to be gradual. We're never going to go back to normal. There's that is not going to happen. There's going to be a different normal. And that's awesome because that just means that we're growing and becoming better people. So we just need to be cognizant of each other. And if, you know, if you're not feeling well, feel free to stay home. And if, you know, you're out doing your thing, do your thing. Uh, but I look for events to come back once we're all clear on this stronger than ever. Um, we, we were doing big weddings for uh, Greeks and Italians, have like four or 500 people, 600 people. Uh, that's definitely going to come back. It may be next year. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, it's okay to grieve the loss of your event. Um, I know uh, uh, brides and grooms are struggling right now. Couples are really like hurting over this and disappointed. It is a huge loss and, it, and it's sad. And if you need someone to talk to, I have... Um, a 20 minute comp complimentary consultation that I um, talk to you. I can talk to you about that, talk you through that. Um, or if you need help rescheduling an event yeah. or something are like that, finding, I can help you with that. That's what I was questioning, Tanya. Are you finding that people are um, doing some patching where maybe they'll have a very small wedding and then reschedule their event so that you're, you're helping them sort of reorganize what's going on with the events and helping them in the planning is just shift a major pivot in, in how they're doing things. Are Absolutely. Yes. People are still doing their weddings. They're usually just keeping it to the officiant, um, them, the couple and a few close um, relatives, parents, grandparents, whatever. Um, so just really keeping it small and then having their vow renewal next year. I've done a lot of that. Uh, we have done some. So you're just planning that out now. Is what yes, yes, okay. yes. So we're, we've planned the wedding and um, little known fact, you can rent um, like uh, the overlook at Mount Washington for like $25 for two hours and we can set up there, set up a little ceremony, get some draping up and have your wedding. It's a beautiful location with an excellent background. And these are things that you don't know about, but I do because I have over 21 years of experience as a planner and I can but help this you is, change. This is just for our audience, this is in Pittsburgh. You're oh yes. About overlooking, and it's a it is a beautiful scenery, uh, Sean, that, that yeah. she has found every nook and cranny in this area. Yes, she can set things up. So I do think that's good. Um, but tell me also, because it seems like I spend an enormous amount of my time now, instead of going to meetings, I'm doing them virtually, just like yes. we're doing them virtually here. So how are you able to pivot from the live event into doing virtual events? How do you handle that as an event planner? 
So when this first started, um, I, I was like, okay, people have immovable dates, like weddings. Um, some people want to get married right, right now. And uh, baby showers, that baby's coming. And it's kind of weird to have a baby shower after the baby's there. That would be a baby welcoming party. <laughs> so um, I created uh, the celebration in a box. And uh, what that is, is each guest would get similar decorations. Um, they would get a smell of a candle so that they can be immersed in all their senses. Um, I've paired with um, some libation specialists and they have like a dry packet that you can add water, pop or alcohol to or soda, wherever you're at. Um, <laughs> and then we, uh, food vendors that help to get the same food. So we're all eating the same food. We're all drinking the same drink. We have all the same decorations. And then I go to the host's house and help open gifts and stuff like that while we stream it live on a video conference. They also will have that forever. They can stream it live to friends and family that can't be there. Mm -hmm. But what's really cool is it's not your average video call because all the little squares have the same background or the same balloons or the same, you know, whatever is going on. And it's really exciting because they can all participate. I'm married to a DJ, which is super fun. And so he, uh, he'll play some music in the background, super soft. So it's not, um, interfering or anything. And it just adds to that ambiance and the immersion of the full So you event. actually have a, a memory that they have forever. Absolutely. And they all have maybe the blue balloon or the pink balloon or yep. up behind them. That's actually, and that's pretty cool, you know, and they can actually see, um, they obviously have to somehow get the gift to them, but you can just send that. We just fire. ship that. Yep. We yeah. just, we handle all that for them. So the, so the host doesn't have to worry about it. We create the box, we design the box together, and then we just ship it all out. And what's really you know cool, what? that is something that you just, it doesn't have to just be here. I mean, you could have could be anywhere. relatives over in California, you're in Pittsburgh, you're got people down like Sean down in Florida. Yes, so you absolutely. can have a worldwide event right there. Yeah. So it's good for corporate. It's good for social. You can do your wedding that way. And the cool thing is that um, everybody then has a copy. It doesn't have to be like, oh, I have to wait for the pictures. Oh, I don't have the pictures. No, you have an entire video, you know, and everybody has that video now. So you don't have to worry about getting anybody pictures or anything. So, so everybody you, has a keepsake. If you have a, if you're a corporate CEO and you're in several locations, you can do a similar thing for a holiday party. Absolutely. You can, so this is something, this is one of the things, Sean, that we uh, talk about is with the pivot, it's developing another income stream yep. that then stays. So when you yes. go back to live, you still have this other income stream that you can use. So we're finding a lot of CEOs are getting pretty creative about that. You gotta be, you gotta be, as things change, you have to change with them or, uh, you know, you're only as good as the last event and you, you should be continuing to grow your business no matter what. Um, life changes, the world changes and you gotta keep up with it. You gotta be offering what they want. And as far as um, corporate CEOs and stuff, imagine what retention you would get sending a celebration box to someone. It's a present that they received, you're creating a buy-in, and now you're creating loyalty because I got a present from you. Well, and not only that, but you're creating a culture, you know, yes. when you're across several locations, which yes. um, is very important because then people feel a part of a team, even when they're virtually apart. Yep. They feel included. They feel like you're, they're part of your family. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what I think's interesting here is, I mean, you've kind of just said, okay, what's the core value added, right? It's bringing people together. It's the community. Yep. Uh, you hit um, a roadblock in that we can't do it the way we used to do it, but okay. you know, you've, you've taken your business and said, how can we simulate a lot of this or how can we do this in a different way? Right. And so going a step beyond just saying, Hey, let's log into zoom into, you know, let's get the backdrop set. Let's just eat and drink the same things. Um, you, you've, you've brought as many elements forward as you can. I guess yeah. the, the interesting thing is going to be as we move into the future, right? A lot of people are questioning. And as I talk to futurists or other people who are looking at the future, nobody knows exactly how much we're just going to snap back <clears throat> to 
It used to be versus change. So how do you, how do you plan for that in your business, Tanya? Oh, I'm glad you asked that question because um, I actually have been thinking about this a lot and brainstorming with my branding agency. And um, we are going to launch Top Shelf Pittsburgh and it's going to be a pop-up event um, where we're going to have different kinds of pop-up events. So we'll have like pop-up cigar bar with cognac or pop-up scotch tasting, mm -hmm. pop-up wine dinners. Um, but it's going to be extremely exclusive to like 20 to 30 people. So um, it'll be very, very small amount of people because that's what the event industry is, you know, um, and the government is saying that we'll be allowed to have small groups of people. Um, it, for St. Patrick's Day, they had started a little bit of that. And that's when we started brainstorming on this idea because uh, you weren't allowed to have more than 50 people in a bar. So <clears throat> I thought, oh my goodness, what if this lasts the entire year or even into next year? We need to be doing something that uh, is fun and exciting because I am all about fun and excitement sure. and um, bring it to, you know, so we'll be having a few events a year and um, you'll be able to follow us on um, Top Shelf Pittsburgh and all you of our events will be listed. Tanya, you're not, if I can just jump in here, the thing that is very interesting about these pop-up events is that you're not investing a ton of money. Right. You don't have to, you know, it's not that you have to have a ton of money. But you can also um, be able to pivot to to be very um, uh, you know be able to pivot. Let's just say, um, and that in doing that, you don't you can always stay current with the trend. Yes. So wherever the trend is going, you're able to do that, and, and you can. Um, and I'm, I'm searching for the word that I'm trying to say, which allows you to be flexible. And, yes. And that's what is very important in your industry because you are very trend focused. I mean, yes. there's no two ways around it. You've got to stay with whatever the trends are. If you're doing last year's trends, people are not yeah. interested <laughs> in, in hiring you. They're always looking for the next best thing. Right. So, so that becomes something that you know, is, is very important in your industry. So that's one thing, Sean, I think is good for our viewers to know is that you can be able to serve your clients, but you have to be able to always be looking at what those trends are. Yeah. And I think, you know, something we've talked about in the entrepreneur CEO as we're <laughs> writing the book and preparing it for releases, you know, part of being a good business owner is kind of keeping your core competencies and the things you developed over the past and the things that are unique about your business, but then also looking to the future. Absolutely. It looks like Tanya is doing that just as natural instinct, right? You, is this a natural instinct or is this yes. something you built over a course of running a business? Well, a little bit of both. Um, I've always been very intuitive. I do have a crystal ball and a magic wand. That is very, very true. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to take a picture and post it so you can see them. Um, but as things have progressed, I've learned that I'm a chameleon and I need to blend in with my surroundings, whatever they may be. Mm -hmm. I need to give my clients what they need without them even asking me sometimes. Sure. Sometimes they know what they want. And sometimes I need to say like, have you thought about this? And they're like, what? Wow, that's awesome. You are in my head. <laughs> right. And, and that's where I, I have to be. I can't give them cutting edge technology and be the luxury event concierge with it. So, um, yeah, as, as time has gone on, I've learned to hone that intuition a lot better and it just continues to grow more and more. <clears throat> yeah. And I think that that's important, right? Is, you know, you that's your, that's part of your value added, particularly it makes a lot of sense in your market segment, right? Being in the luxury area. Yep. Yep. They want people, they want things done for, done for you. Right. And we talked earlier about do it yourself and that's just not your market, right? If somebody's oh, in the yeah. market to figure out how they can <laughs> cobble the pieces together, they're not hiring you. You're, you're in a different market segment. I am the type of person that um, if you're hiring me, we're going to have a lot of fun. It's, it's going to be a party all the time, <laughs> right. but we will get stuff done and we're going to do it in an easy way that is not going to stress you out. You will not have anxiety. You will not have to worry about things, whether you are a bride with a wedding coming up 
um, a mom uh, uh, to be with a bridal a baby shower coming up or a corporate leader that's like, wow, this got dumped on my desk and I already have enough stuff to do. Like I, I need an extra set of hands. I need somebody handling this. I'm your girl and you right. won't have how, to think about it. <laughs> how far out do people plan? Um, I've had, uh, usually it's about a year. So that's uh, the, the, this is actually corporate. perfect. Um, corporate. corporate is a lot quicker. Co corporate happens a lot quicker. I've done weddings up to three months. So I know I have the resources that I need after 21 years. I have over 1700 vendors. I pretty much can get you anything that you want. I'm very, I love to network and make friends with people and find out what unique things they have. Um, corporate is pretty fast. Uh, holiday parties, people start thinking about that very last minute. And so, you know, October, November, the phone starts ringing and it's like, oh my God, I need to have a corporate party. And I don't want to have it that it's going to interfere with anything. So can I have it the first week in December? And I know you only have three or four weeks to figure this out. And it's like, no problem. I got you. So my team and I work together cohesively to pull together whatever you need. I yeah. have to share one event, Sean, that um, took place when my son was getting married. My younger son, my older son was the best man. Okay. He happened to be living in Texas. Mm -hmm. And so he, he says, mom, how am I putting this bachelor party together? What am I gonna do? Cause they, yeah. they are in the military. And so they got guys coming from all over sure, sure. that are coming in. And he's like, what am I gonna do? I said, well, I'm gonna <coughs> talk to Tanya. And we're going to put it together because it was going to be a wedding here in Pittsburgh. So yep. she said, no problem. We figured out the hotel where they were going to stay, suddenly decided, oh, no, you didn't book soon enough in advance. So we gave your rooms away. So Tanya found a hotel. Tanya found a limousine so that they could go down into Pittsburgh, found, the, found a nice restaurant. And the restaurant then was giving free champagne and free drinks because they were all military. So, okay. so it was even like better, huge, even better, right? Oh yeah, yeah I hooked them up. Huge event, <laughs> and then they didn't have to worry about driving. So I mean, it was all taken care of. And um, you know, my son looked like a hero yeah. when when he just used Tanya to to set the thing up. But it just certainly made life easier because he was not around. And that's another reason why a um, having an event planner can be so helpful is that they know the, the, the they know all the decisions that have to be made. They know all of the um, different um, venues. They know just how to put right. things together. Well, I think that, I think that knowledge and in that industry experience, that's the huge you know, she's, part. she's talking about different restaurants, part. different uh, places, right? That's your, that's one of your core value. What else is in your core value added, Nanya, right? So you have this knowledge, right? You just know, I guess, the order to do things in an event. You know what the places are. What, what are some of the core things that you kind of have? Uh, we see some of them, but what have you doubled down on as you grow your business? Um, I, I'm very intuitive and I can sense people's feelings um, for how, how they feel the event is proceeding. And I, I check in a ton and I tell them that at the beginning, I say, I'm going to repeat myself a lot. <laughs> I'm going to continue asking you the same question over and over. And it's not because I'm not listening to you. I am definitely listening to you. I want to make sure that we're still going down the right path that you want us to go down. I, I, you know, sometimes there are little pivots, little changes that people start making in the design. And uh, I just want to make sure that we're getting it right. But there, for me, the best currency is at the end of an event when I've started with them at the beginning, created the design, executed the event, and the look on their face at the end of the night, it makes me effervesce inside. I just get so excited about it. I can't take it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I do think, I do think that um, you're, you're a partner with them through this. Yes. But it's the creativity, too, that people are not necessarily creative. They'll come in and say, well, gee, I'd like a really great event. Here are my colors, and what do I do? And so um, I think that painting different scenarios is another way, you know, that, that Tanya um, or an event planner is any good event planner is going to be able to do that. And yeah. so that's why um, the other thing that I think is interesting is that she's building this business. So she has assets, which uh, is yes. not just her knowledge, but all of her connections. Yeah. Um, it's the procedures, the way in which she does things that becomes assets, which we talk about in our journey to CEO, 
is that you're building assets all along the way. Um, and that's something that, you know, you still, if she were to sell this business someday, she would need to sell it to someone who is also an event planner who has that ability to be creative. You right. know, she couldn't sell it to someone who has more of an analytic um, mindset. She needs to have that intuitive creative person, but they would get a business in a box in a sense, just like yep. you're creating. So I, I think that is one of the things that sometimes people forget. Well, uh a lot of people in high touch businesses, service businesses, you know, they'll say, I just don't have anything to sell. But Tanya, I mean, you've got, I have I a imagine, living, I imagine you got, business. you got people that come back to you regularly. They know that you're the person to call when you do, do an event. And so with the right transition process, I could see how, you know, you could pass on a lot of your knowledge to somebody else who could help your clients into the future. Absolutely. Um, from the second I started coaching with Anne, um, we had talked about that um, an exit strategy right away about um, do I want to leave this as a legacy or do I want to sell this off? And I wasn't sure. So we just prepared everything as if it may get sold off. Yeah. Um, a lot of times too, like when you were asking about value add, I had one of my favorite events. I had a wireless company that wired all of Pittsburgh. And uh, we were designing the layout and everything for Stage AE. And Stage AE here in Pittsburgh is a black, dark venue. It's for concerts. Okay. Um, but they had like 300 people coming. And the um, woman-owned business owner was like, I really don't want this to be so dark. I want this to be happy and lighting, lit up. And I, she was like, like a fairy garden. And I was like, I can pipe and drape this and put twinkle lights behind it and turn this into a fairyland. She's like, are you serious? I said, yes, I absolutely can. So we did it. But even better than that, I said, do you have some top executives that work for you that you'd like to do some extra for them? And she's like, yeah. And this was like June or July. And uh, we had like, I don't know, 50 some, 40 some tables. And we actually had wreaths made grapevine wreaths um, with some, God bless you, with some flowers on it and stuff like that. And at the end of the night, we presented them to them. So, hey, yeah, less cleanup for me. <laughs> but, right. you know, they were able to use that as a gift then. And they hadn't even thought of that. They were just like, well, we don't, whatever we're going to do for centerpiece, we'll just get some flowers or something. And I was like, no, why don't you go a little deeper? So, I don't know what you call that, but like, that is something that for corporate, I like to get them involved and get them engaged. And then I stay and I meet people and I, and I'm like, hi, I'm Tanya, the planner. And what's your name? And then I say goodbye to them at the end of the night and say their name. So, you know, the Disney experience is not lost on me. I, <laughs> I really try to take that as a value add and learn people's names and the things that they like and really get to know my clients and their circle of influence that are close to them. So that's. Awesome. Yeah, so Tanya, you're, you're really, a, you, you've built something great. You obviously have a unique knowledge in events. Um, you know, if we got a viewer out there that's watching and saying, hey, I do need somebody like this to come in there. How do they find you? How do they get to know your work and what you're capable of? Um, you can find me at weddingsofpittsburgh.com or eventsofpittsburgh.com. Um, you can Google Tanya Edinger and I come up at the top. <laughs> I've done that before. <laughs> um, you can uh, email me at Tanya, T-O-N-Y-A, at Weddings of Pittsburgh. And I can answer any questions you may have for me. And there's also a scheduling link on both of those sites if you want to um, chat for 20 minutes. Uh, and we can get to know each other. Fantastic. Well, question. and we can also, if we need to go away, you can help us get out of our uh, homes and go on a destination. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm a certified uh, beaches and sandals specialist, and I'm learning to expand that uh, to uh, the Charisma Hotels as well. Um, so right now I'm in the Caribbean and I'm looking to expand to Mexico, but I like hot spots. So that's where I'm going to be helping you to get away to. Fantastic, <laughs> folks. Drop your comments at Journey to CEO. I think Tanya's given us a lot of great tips. We'd love to know what you took away from it, what questions you have. We'll be checking out the comments at Journey to CEO YouTube channel. Of course, make sure you subscribe. Drop your comments. We'll be reading through them, and we're looking forward to hearing from you. Tanya, thanks for joining us. 
Oh, and thank you so much for having me. I greatly appreciate it. It was fun. Uh, and I, of course, want to thank our viewers and say, take a moment, pat yourself on the back for doing your hard work and join us for another episode of Journey to CEO here on YouTube. And we'll talk to you again very soon. Tanya, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everyone.